Hi, how are you? I hope all of you are doing well and staying safe, and I'm so glad you can join us. Welcome to Microsoft Education's Global Learning Week. And although I wish we could be meeting together face to face, I'm so glad we'll be able to spend some time this week to reflect on and importantly celebrate what has been a school year none of us will soon forget. So what can you expect during this Microsoft Global Learning Week? Well, expect to hear some encouraging stories from educators and students and expect to nod your head as they uncover and share how they've overcome obstacles that many of you have been facing over the last several months. Expect to hear some lessons and get inspired on things that you can actually take back to your classrooms, whether you continue on remote learning, return face to face, or embrace blended learning going forward. And lastly, and most importantly, as you deserve it, expect to have some fun this week. We'll be coming to you each day for about an hour with stories, updates, tips from educators, students, and parents. You'll hear from Microsoft as well as some special partners. So grab some snacks, kick back, and let's hang out for a while. I wanna start with the biggest and frankly, most heartfelt thank you to all of you for your leadership and the work that you've done around the world to make the transition to remote learning while remaining connected to your students. Now, it goes beyond me and I've got some great special guests here to help recognize and thank you for the work that you've done. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Hi, how's everyone doing? Hi, how's everyone doing? Uh, I'm so, I love the enthusiasm, but it's a good thing I can mute everyone quickly. Now, I want to hear about how remote learning is going for you. Who wants to go first? Perfect. I see a hand raised. How's it going? It's been weird because some days we've been like the half, half of the class has been at home. So we're on like 10 students at school. So it's empty and quiet. Our class is like really fun to be with and everyone's so nice um, and it just feels really like sad that you can't talk to them as normal as you would if you're in school. It's totally understandable for all of you to be missing your classmates right now. Being together, sharing and learning with friends is one of the best parts of being at school. But we all know your pros at making the best of a not so perfect situation. And I'm super curious to learn how you've all been staying connected. You know, I can still talk with my friends using the team chat and I can do the school assignments using notebook. So it's pretty nice. We keep in touch like with teams, the team chat. And if I don't understand, I can ask um, Ms. Herdlund on teams. And she helps you very, very much. And she knows what she's doing. And that's made, makes it easier to be at home and in school. Sounds like you're in great hands. It was good talking with you all. I'm proud of all you've accomplished this year from home. Stay safe, stay connected to each other, and thank you. Bye, everybody. Well, we've got a lot of great stuff to cover and stories to hear. But first, a word from Justin. Oh, hello, and welcome. I gotta tell you, even though we're all at home, I'm so excited that we can spend this Global Learning Week together. Now we've been cooking up some fun new updates and features that I'll be popping in and out of today's episode to share them with you. Now with that quick note, I'll get back to cooking and I'll let the learning continue. Hello, Bryson. I'm Miss Ford. Hi, Miss Flowers. How you doing? Good. We're doing great. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Miss seeing you every day. Me too. <laughs> I was supposed to be back at school. I was just checking in on you. I'm just trying to see how everything was. How did everything work out for you? And um, just as we end this school year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bryce, you made it. Fifth grade ready. Woo woo. Yeah, I'm ready for the fifth grade. How are you doing, Miss Powers? Because I know this was tough. So, are you doing okay? It was a little bit difficult because I'm not as tech savvy. I, it was more of a learning experience for me as well because I had to be on top of my game to ensure that the kids 
still got the same quality education that they would as if they were in the classroom. So it was a big learning experience for me, but it was also fun because it was like, I'm learning something and I get to share it with them. And they don't know, I just learned it probably the night before, um, learning how to write on the screen. So I'm like, okay, let me show y'all how to share my screen. And, okay, this is what we're gonna do. And they all ears and they, and they just grasped it so quickly. And for me, it was like, uh, I'm more hands-on. I want to actually show them. So it was like a little constraining at times, but in the end, it was a lot of fun because I got to see them and still spend time with them um, at least three days out the week. During all of this remote learning, how did you stay connected with your students and engaged with them and making sure that they were able to get assignments done? And even if for those that struggled, how did you support students if they struggled during all of this process that was so new to everyone? Um, well, we use Microsoft Teams, so we were um, meeting three times a week. It was a little bit like almost as if I were in the classroom working with a small group. And um, I did have some parents who um, who had some difficulties logging into Teams and everything. So that's why I would just send them the um, recordings and they were able to watch it. But I checked those assignments every day because as long as they knew I was looking and they would continue to do it. But a lot of it was parent support, a lot of your help because y'all stayed on them. And that helped me tremendously. When when you have parents stay on them, it's, it makes my work a lot easier so, Miss Ford, how was it to be teacher for a little bit? How was it to, to be a teacher with Bryce and to make sure he was on point, but also do your work? Did you have any challenges during that or was Bryson the model student? <laughs> So you see, I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, I thought it was going to be much easier than it actually was. I thought because of my background in technology, instructional technology, that this would be a breeze, but it was far from a breeze because having to be 100% dedicated to your work and doing that, but also now you're 100% making sure that he's doing his work. And I can even imagine having a classroom full of students like just into everything and just you have to stay on them because they rush through and that's Bryson's problem. He wants to rush through his work mm -hmm. so that he can get on to something else that's not his business. So we always have to stay on him about staying in his lane. I know how Bryson is. But I want to ask Bryson a question if it's okay. Bryson, what was like your favorite part about all of this? Because we still like to see our friend instead of having to just do the package and not be on a call because it's a long time to see your and not see your friends for two months. Cause that's it a is. long time. So he was glad that he was able through teams. He was able to connect with the students. So that was one way that you did a great job. And you know this was really uh, traumatic for students mm -hmm. and for adults. So for them to be able to still connect with their classmates and that that just gave them a sense of things being normal. So that was really good. And I liked how you used teams to help do that, make that connection. Mm -hmm. As we get ready to prepare to go back to school next year, um, from a teacher's point of view, I would say just do what you normally do. Don't let everything that's happening right now affect your abilities as a teacher. You're still a strong teacher. You still um, have your areas of strength. Just play on those. Just incorporate everything that we had to um, learn if some of us had to learn new things during this time just incorporate that into your everyday teaching I mean now everybody is a tech savvy teacher so we uh, just have more things where we introduce technology to them but don't get discouraged because if you made it through this trust me you can make it through anything just take it one day at a time because that's really how we have to play it by now um just go in with the expectation that I'm an awesome teacher and I'm going to um, have some awesome students and we're going to do some awesome things together and we're going to make the most of this. From a parent's perspective, and I would be remiss if I did not tell you this, Ms. Flowers, how thankful I am for what you did for our students during remote learning during this pandemic. And it's just mind blowing to me that you didn't know these tools prior to this or that you're not tech savvy and that you took the initiative to learn these tools like Microsoft Teams 
to be able to connect with your students and to make sure that they could continue to learn at the caliber that we as parents were used to for your students. And then for you to just go above and beyond and to have those additional office hours and those times where students could get that additional support when you mastered, I was just blown away. When I saw you work those math lessons in PowerPoint and you were able to annotate, and I knew these tools are, can do all of this, but to see you do this real time with my child and those students that needed that additional math support and to be able to replay those math problems so the students could then watch those and really grasp the concept, that was just totally amazing. I'm just truly thankful that you took the time to do that because you didn't have to. And what I want to say to parents is that no matter what happens going forward, because we don't know what's going to happen, if we're going to be completely back to normal, if we're going to have some type of combination of online and face-to-face -face learning, but as parents, just support your, your child, support the teachers, and know that we're all in this together and that we will come out better for this than how we came into it. All right. Well, I will talk to you all. I will see you in August when I go back to school. Bye. 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 Hello again. It's me, back with an update from our sponsor, Microsoft Teams Security Features. If you're like me, you care a lot about security. And with Teams, you can rest easy knowing we're obsessed with keeping you, your students, and your information secure. Let's walk through some of these capabilities in Teams. In your class meetings, you can restrict who can present and make meeting actions like mute everyone. There's now a meeting lobby, and you can specify who and when students can join your meeting. You can also get an attendance report at the end of your meeting. And finally, class insights can be added to any class team, which uses data analytics to help you see how your students are engaging. It feels good to know you're safe with Teams. Now let me just check that door lock one more time. Hello. My name is Maria Lorenda Ruiz Alma, and I am from Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo. I work as a headmistress in Notre Dame School. We have been a Microsoft school for many years. Now, yeah, during this COVID-19, we had a very good experience, even though all the drama that this moment has. Uh, but uh, because we were prepared to go online, we just have to put the teachers inside the screen because they were already using it and all the students and parents, they were all trained. So after two days of the lockdown, we were fully working with teams. All our classes, the whole curriculum, we open a virtual synchronous classes with all the schedule the same as the students have had in the school. We have in our program a uh, science fair that we celebrate every year uh, during the uh, planet Earth anniversary. And we were talking about, can we do it? Can we go on with it? But after a community meeting, we decided to go on with it because science will keep students occupied uh, doing scientific projects, pre doing presentations, learning how to present virtually. So it was completely successful. We had judges from all over the world. We have judges from Canada, from the United States, from Brazil, from Bahamas, from Bermuda, from Mexico. It was incredible. It was, you know, a whole experience just meeting them. Huh? But that these people were there you know, cheering you up and asking you questions. And also some scientists were telling the students, oh, I like your your project. What about if you work with me and we work on that? So it was, it was a spectacular, it was fantastic. 
One of them was Ms. Dorian Jani from NASA. She's the lead scientist in the Global Precipitation Measurements satellites of NASA. And she was one of the judges and she was so impressed that she also organized a masterclass with all the high school students from 9 through 12 to explain to them what are the projects there and uh, also she uh, wanted to inspire them to become an astronaut. As a matter of fact, we have one student that is going to study to be an astronaut and she invited him to go to NASA this summer and know how they work and all that is required to study there. Really the experience has been wonderful given the times we are living. We conducted several uh, surveys to our students and most of them they said that they prefer classes, virtual classes, that they can uh, participate more in the class. Uh, they are more active. Everything is in one place. Teachers said that students that did not participate in class are participating now incredibly. Students that they didn't know they have so, so much talent in math or in social studies or those incredible ideas, now they are discovering the minds of many kids that were introverted, that did not want to participate in class, but virtually they write, they send messages, and now they are participating. So it's uh, very good. The teacher has lots of resources with OneNote, with uh, uh, forms. But the thing is, the only thing they miss is the human contact, the human contact. They said, we miss our friends. And we said to the kids, but they are here. Turn on your microphones and say, hello, hello. And it is very important now that those teachers that were afraid of using technology, please don't be afraid. Use technology. We don't know if this is the future. Students love it. Huh? And uh, you, you will never imagine all the benefits you will have using technology. It is incredible what we can do. It is fantastic. I highly recommend it. Well, thank you for having me. Bye-bye and have a nice day. Bye. Hi there, welcome back. Next, we're gonna share something really special to show how to change your background in Teams. Where are you right now? On the couch, sitting at home, in the closet where it's quiet? I get it. But what if you could transform your background to anywhere? How about in the jungle with the mighty sloth. We're on an acre full of unicorns. What about in outer space? These are the custom backgrounds in Microsoft Teams, and we've created some brand new ones specifically for educators and students. Check them out. Hi everyone, welcome to day one of Global Learning Week. I am so excited to be here with you and I'm even more excited to introduce you to my friends, Pip and Luke. Pip and Luke are gonna be joining us to chat about how their schools down in Australia have transformed into using Teams for all of their classes and it's quite a remarkable journey. Oh look, here they are now. Hi Pip, hi Luke. You, I can't believe you guys are here and it looks like you're actually in a school building and it's like I'm looking into the future. What are you guys, where are you right now? Luke and I are both about two hours north of Sydney in an area called Newcastle and I'm um, a Deputy Principal of Innovation and I work across schools in the district to help them innovate and integrate technology into teaching and learning. That's awesome. So. Tell me a little bit about what your school community was like, BT, before Teams. So I started on Google Classroom, and um, this was last year, and I started there. Found it very clunky, um, and the students sort of migrated earlier in the year to Teams. Um, they liked the integration of it. Um, it was very easy to use, sort of OneNote was all there, and they found that because everything was inside Teams, they didn't have to leave Teams. Um, so it was really good for the low ability plus the high ability classes and it was really good. Awesome. And Pip, how about for you? What was life like for you before Teams? 
So um, at Luke's school, um, we call it sort of like the choose your own adventure model of EdTech where um, teachers could choose whatever they wanted. So some teachers were try were working with Google Classroom, some were emailing, some were had chosen not to use technology and still very much face-to-face -face, synchronous learning. Um, and we were just starting as an executive in the school to get a strategy around BYOD for students to bring their own devices and to for us to be head into a bit of a blended learning exam, um, situation. So um, it was go for it, try it, give it a crack, see how you go, and uh, let's let's talk in a while was the approach. Yeah, and I'm sure that was rough for parents, like having to know well for this and for the kids too to say well this teacher I turn my work in this way and for this teacher I turn my work in this way and and so um, eventually though you you all made the switch to Microsoft Teams but it um, and you said it didn't start school wide right yeah that's correct we um uh, as we went into as we started hearing whispers of schools closing, um, we realized that it would be best for parents to be engaged in their student learning because they hadn't been because it was just too confusing. So we were kind of thinking we might shuffle people into teams because people like Luke had seen it working for them. And um, we decided to go with a strategy where we put every year group into one team and put all the teachers into those teams. To, to My idea was to get teachers used to using um, the team's environment before we head them off into their own class in a few weeks. So it was for three weeks um, to do that. And um, some of the best stories came out of that. And one of those I'd love to share with you. We had a, a girl who was um, a non-attender to school. She hadn't been turning up much at all and not having much headway getting her into school and within 24 hours of opening this team for her she was inside the team she was communicating with people she was telling people the students where to go because as we all know the students get a little bit their brain somehow gets a bit kerfuffled when it's ed tech so so she was helping her peers to to navigate assignments and know where to co converse with people and um, and then she met one of our teachers in the supermarket a couple of weeks later and she said that online thing miss I really love it I'm going to come back to school when school comes back and that was enough for the teachers to realize that they could actually do this it was really inspiring for them so after that initial two three weeks of everyone together the teachers then split off into their own regular class teams and we created a little bit of a recipe to help them with their with their lesson activity um, planning and um, preparation so that's that's how we came to be every teacher having their own teams environment for every class in the school that's amazing and luke i think you have a story too about uh how teams created new collaborations for your students yeah yeah so particularly like going into lockdown so we could easily have um, you know all our students online together and i could easily share a text for example because being an english teacher we'd look at a text together um, and then the students are working collaboratively on identifying, you know, the language techniques within that text and they're all working on it together and you'd have one student pick out a technique and then you'd have another student pick out the example from the text that represented that technique. So it was really good. That's awesome. I never get tired of hearing stories like this. It just um, amazes me. And so we're almost caught up to present day, but what happened, of course, around the world was COVID-19. And suddenly, I believe you guys were in your eighth week of school with a brand new school year, and suddenly you found yourselves having to dive into remote teaching. So um, how were your students and school community able to handle that transition? Um, I think it was such a shock to us all. We all just had to move forward with it. Um, unfortunately, there was no great, you know, we had a week to plan, so to speak. So we decided to um, to so go with some of the best best practices we've heard about online learning, cut our learning down to about a third of what we would have done face to face, very clear, explicit instructions, very explicit um, tutorials created. We used a lot of PowerPoint recorder and the Windows G game bar, things like that to make our tutorials and everything we wanted from the students, we used assignments and we communicated with our families that everything was in teams. It's okay, we've got this. And we use Teams Meet now, especially with our senior students 
students to meet with them as often as possible um, to contact, keep in contact with those students. Um, so we sort of um, jumped in sort of a bit cold into the water, if, you, if, if that's the best way to describe it. But as the students came back, we've been surveying them and finding out their information. While they didn't enjoy not being with their friends and they didn't enjoy losing all that social contact at school, they did enjoy the opportunity to work at their own pace, to be able to do maths for a whole day if they wanted, or to stick to their regular timetable. So it actually gave flexibility. Um, and that's something that, that's really exciting for me uh, to support teachers to, to develop. Awesome. Luke, how about you? Yeah, so I mean, we started to transition some of, some of my classes and some of my students at the beginning of the year. Um, I had a couple of students that wanted to bring their own device to our classroom. Um, so I'm like, okay, what's the best way to do it? Let's give teams a trial. Um, so when we went into remote learning, I had a few students that were already confident, um, but then it was just you know, like a light switch, it just sort of happened overnight. Okay, quick, everyone, we're on teams, we're working from home. Um, I found my students liked, as Pip said, the flexibility. Um, so I would give them two or three lessons worth of work and then tell them, look, feel free to start at five o'clock in the afternoon or at 10 o'clock in the morning, whenever, up to you. Um, we would then schedule sort of a meet now meeting for um, midweek so I could touch base with all my students. Um, and have that sort of face-to-face -face contact and we'd go over things, work in collaborative and whatnot. Um, yeah, so it was really good. Really Luke, what was also, um, like if I think about the student's transition, um, what was your like wow moment for like, like suddenly seeing the power of Teams? That, because you said you tried other tools besides Teams. And so what was your wow moment when you saw the students working? Probably the... Um, sort of quiet, non-vocal students that I had in the class. So the wow moment was seeing all these typically shy students getting on social media or and using Teams and all of a sudden having a big voice in the class and everybody's going, oh, you know, great idea. And these are the students that don't talk in class. They don't raise their hands. Um, you know, even if you prompt them for questions, they just shut up and go, no, no, no. So seeing all that work online that they were doing, coming out and chatting and, yep, oh, I can help you do this. I can help you do that, which is something you don't see from them in the classroom. So it was great. That's amazing. So how long have you been back actually physically in school? Now. We've we've been back, this is our third week in school, and um, we're kind of taking the approach in my schools of are we going to build bin it, build it, or are we, and we're going to blend it. So it's a three Bs, bin it, build it, and blend it. And we're taking lessons of what, what the students, talking to students, talking with teachers, what worked well, what didn't work so well. And we're, we're trying to look for a very slow and steady moving forward to keep and build on what we started during COVID. So COVID's been a great thing for us in, in retrospect. Yeah, I kind of am feeling there's a lot of silver linings in this, forced to transform um and what luke what are you seeing like your students physically now that they're back physically are you seeing like changes in their the way they engage with learning now that you're back physically yeah definitely so i've got a lot more students that are bringing their own device into class um so i run a lot of my lessons through teams um, I've got my little tech crew as a forum. Um, they've all got their own little sort of private channel as a group of tech kids. Um, so they get on there and they chat in this channel and um, you know, help each other out with setting up and loading assignments and things like that. Um, we do like a weekly task for their homework and that's all through assignments on Teams. Um, but it's definitely that voice I've found. So all the students that, you know, the ones with anxiety and things like that that wouldn't talk in a class are now all over teams and they're chatting and they're you know engaging with each other and then asking me little questions on the side and things like that through teams thank you again guys have Bye. a great um rest of your day and we'll talk soon we'll see you thank soon you. Bye. bye are you looking for ways to keep your students engaged while at home and in the classroom do you use a learning management system well, let's take a look at our LMS Greatest Hits. Featuring Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, Desire to Learn, Schoology, It's Learning, Howler, and many others. Speaking of LMSs, 
We have a special guest coming up next who wants to share their experience using Microsoft Partner Schoology and Teams. You don't want to miss this. Hello, I'm Danny Patterson, and I work in Clean ISD at Clean Texas. Clean ISD is smack dab in the center of Texas. We have about 45,000 students. We are not a one-to-one -one district. We have mobile labs. We have about 8,000 staff members. When we're looking at the at school, at home, at anywhere concept, Schoology and Office 365 has been our go-to tool our hub of information and our hub for collaboration and communication so that when you're wanting to know more or find out more, you're able to go to one spot rather than having to search through different programs, different emails, and then using Schoology, teachers are able to communicate with students and parents anytime that they want. When I present Schoology, it's always, it's Schoology and Office 365. Like I never come showcasing just Schoology or just Microsoft. It's kind of like a marriage. Office 365 is also our single sign-on. So for a teacher to even get to Schoology, they have to get to Office first. The very first thing that they're greeted to is a hub with important links. It has announcements. Um, it's, it's just pretty much like a one-stop shop for everything that you might need as a Clean ISD employee. And so one of those main links on that page is Schoology. Um, I love presenting on the tool because I always explain that they come hand in hand and even though you have OneDrive um, on your web browser, when you're in Schoology, you can also locate your OneDrive um, through your resources tab, through your groups tab, through your courses tab. So like I said, you can't have Schoology without Office 365 here in our district. On the administrative side, you heard me just talk about how we have a hub of all communication. So anytime that there were COVID announcements, closure announcements, it was all in the same area and teachers knew where to go to get that. And then let's say they left their computers at school because they thought, you know what, I'm not going to take my computer while I'm on spring break and they couldn't get on campus to get it. They still had access to all of their files. So they never like skipped a beat. They had everything that they need at their fingertips if they didn't have their computers on their cell phones or uh, once they got logged into a computer. For people out there who are new to using a learning management system like Schoology and connecting it with Office 365, my biggest tip for you would be to make it some type of expectation for all district users. It is important that it comes from the top down it's a lot harder to take a product and take it from a teacher role and try to roll it out district wide. So you really need that support from your district admin. Just like we teach and we say and we, we really say to we're blue in the face, model, model, model for students, I encourage that for administrators. You need to model for, for your principals on what it looks like. Principles, you need to model what it looks like for your teachers. It's not easy. I'm going to say that. It's going to be really hard. There will be people who push back. There will be people who suggest different products. But if you continue to be that light and be that person to promote why we need to stay on one platform, why we need to stay using Office 365, you're going to see people kind of jump on board a little bit faster because they're going to see the beauty of everything that kind of embeds together. Hi everyone, I'm Winnie Ng from St. Harry's Primary School in Hong Kong. I'm an MIEE and I'm happy to be here with you. This is a very tough year for educators and teachers. If you are exhausted, I know the feeling because I feel the same uh, but you should know that you have a great support network here and I'm grateful to talk about a few things that seems to work for me and my student while remote learning today I'm going to talk about uh, how I use Microsoft Teams to increase the student engagement in online learning so before that my student and I uh, never used Microsoft Teams for teaching and learning but nowadays Teams is a 
core to in my daily teaching. Uh, so every day before the lesson, first of all, uh, I always create a meeting in the calendar, including the objectives of the lesson and the homework that they in the details. So before my students join the lesson, they know what they're going to learn, what they're going to do that day. It helps me a lot and it helps them to get ready for the virtual lessons. Uh, it becomes a learning routine for my class now. Also, uh, Teams lets my students easy to access the links or apps I share with them. Uh, for example, I may share the Nearpod lesson code or Kahoot code in the meeting chat after I schedule the meeting. When my students are in the meeting, in, the, in my uh, virtual lesson, they can easily find the links or code in the meeting chat rather than looking around outside the post. Another example is I use Microsoft Forms for KWL uh, reading strategies. Uh, students can assess the forms easily because it becomes a highlight box which is big and sharp and easy easy to see. Uh, so it helps me a lot. And Poly is an other free app in Teams which is very handy. If I upload videos, I always set up some question to check my student they did watch it or not. So this is how I prepare my lesson every day. What I really like Teams is students can collaborate in their own chat. Uh, they can record their meeting separately and I can hold four calls at the same time. Uh, so I can go to different groups to help and to assist them. Uh, after these four months uh, since February, the group leaders could call and monitor their group uh, by themselves. I'm really surprised uh, remote learning can enhance my students' leadership as well. So I'm, I would like to ask you some question. Do you have any positive feelings or outcomes uh, comes out of, uh, of remote learning? If you have some positive thinking or ideas, please write down and I would like to share with you. So now I'm going to write and please take out a piece of paper and a pen to write down your thought. So for me, I think the flexibility is the most important thing and advantage of remote learning. Because for teacher, actually we can provide more information and we can cater our student needs. For students, they can ask questions what they would like to ask in real time. It seems as effective as uh, the teaching in the classroom. And also we can still train them to be active learners. So this is what I would like to share. Please feel free to reach out and don't be afraid to check in on each other. Social emotional learning starts with us and luckily educators makes the best teammates uh, because we are always here for one another. Sharing is always caring. Until we can meet and again in person, thank you for listening. Bye bye. Time to go to the phones and answer your most burning questions about Teams. Yes, hello, Justin. I want to see all my students' faces in class meetings. Will you show more video streams in Teams? That's a great question. And the good news is that we're releasing seven by seven video streams and meetings. That's 49 videos that you can see all at once in a Teams meeting. What's next? Hi, Justin. First time caller, long time listener. Can I break my class into virtual breakout rooms? We get this question a lot. And the good news is that our team is building breakout rooms right now and we'll be re releasing it later this fall. Can't wait for that one. Hi, Justin. I want to use Microsoft Teams and Office in my classroom, but my school doesn't have the budget. What do you suggest? That's a great question. And you know what? Teams and Office 365 for Education is free for all students and educators in the entire world. And you can get started today. Well, that's all the time we have for questions today, but you can keep the conversation going on Twitter at Microsoft EDU or ping me directly at Justin Chando. Hi, 
everyone. My name is Kemi, and I'm so glad I could join you all today. I am an educational technologist here in Nigeria, and I teach at um, a university here. I also help K-12 schools engage in technology into their classrooms. I have been a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert for over six years. It's been an awesome experience for me as a Microsoft educator. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm finding tools that meet the needs of my students, especially at this point in time. I'm here today to talk to you about one of my favorite resources on the Microsoft Educator community. I believe that it's a resource that helps me for learning anytime, anywhere. I love it even much more now because it's naturally suited for remote learning. Skype in the Classroom is an amazing community where uh, teachers like you and I can find each other and then connect our classrooms across the globe. Uh, my favorite activity on the Skype in the Classroom community is the virtual field trips because uh, I love to travel, I, I love adventure, and I love the fact that I can take my students and my kids on these trips and this adventure. But my favorite virtual field trips are when we visit the museums, uh, because with the museums, you can get to learn about the history of a country or a place all in one place. You can understand the lifestyles and the cultures of people. We visited museums like the Cairo Museum in Egypt. We visited a museum in, in Russia. So it's been an amazing experience going on these virtual field trips. And then also during this remote learning period, uh, Skype in the Classroom started what we call the live events. So these live events are events that run through the week, uh, especially, more specifically every Wednesdays. And with these live events, uh, students can get to visit very, uh, different places around the world. What is awesome about this live event is that it's not only restricted to the classroom engagement, it's open to teachers, it's open to parents, it's open to students. It's easy to join with just a click on the link. And so you don't even need to have a Skype or a team to be part of this live event. All you need to have is a web uh, enabled device and this makes it open and inclusive for all kinds of um, students or home engagements. I'm glad as a parent because right now we have my, I have my kids at home because we are obeying the stay at home directives from our government. And so my, my, the schools in my community, in my nation is still, they're still closed. And so my kids are all at home. And um, this, this live events have been like a breather for us. It's been something that as a family, we look forward to every week, every Wednesday. And it gives my children the opportunity to visit different places every week and learn something new at each uh, visit. So it's more like a family treat for us every Wednesday and we always look forward to it. We've been on various live events um, since it began and we've been to Zoo Montana, which is a non-profit zoo in Montana, where we learned about amazing animal adaptations. We also visited the NC Museum of Natural Science uh, to learn about dinosaurs and their different evolution period. It's, it's an event that allows the kids to ask their questions live and they get their live responses. And I remember at this dinosaur event where we're learning about dinosaurs and evolution, um, a kid asked the question, if dinosaurs are 65 million years old, how come this is 2020? And so it makes sense because uh, you would expect that the dates right now will be reading in the millions since we had animals that dated way back then. But you know, this is a question that could have been in the hearts of this kid and wouldn't have gotten a response if he was watching a documentary or just watching a video. So it's it's actually a very engaging um, event for for children, for kids, for students, even for us as parents and adults. So it's an all-inclusive kind of event. One thing I know is that students love this event. For my kids, you could see the excitement of when next are we having this live event? When next can we go on a virtual field trip? And it's an amazing experience for children. And so engaging in this kind of activity, it's more like a brain break for the students, something to bring sunshine into the whole situation. We know this is a challenging period for educators. During this period, Skype in the Classroom recently launched a program called at Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. And there are, at this moment, over hundreds of educators who are ready to connect with you as an educator to share best practices, discuss teaching strategies, class management and planning, as well as offer tips and tricks on tech tools and their practical implications. 
So I hope you consider registering for some of these amazing virtual field trips and be sure to let me know what you or your students thought after your engagement with the virtual field trips or the live events. You can tag me on my Twitter and don't forget to ta tag um, Skype in the Classroom also to let us know what you think about this. So we can be virtual world travelers together. We can learn about the world with the world. So bye everyone. Well, that about does it for our first day of Global Learning Week. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you found some good tips that you can take forward and had some fun along the way. Oh, it looks like we have some other friends that want to say thanks too. Hi, everyone. Hey, Anthony, and hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I loved getting to see all these faces today. So much fun. Thanks to everyone for joining us for Global Learning Week. We hope you had a great time and learned lots of great things to bring back to your classroom. Thanks again. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Well, thank you all so much for being part of this. Uh, I want to make sure that all of you come back tomorrow because we're going to be talking literacy, accessibility, and inclusivity. How do we engage all of our students? More stories, more tips, and of course, more from the best community. See you tomorrow, and thank you for joining. <laughs>